It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, uh, so much has been said. Let me reflect a little bit uh, from uh, a practitioner point of view, because uh, 20, the, the, the 17 SDGs, to me, uh, when they were launched in 2015, uh, created a common denominator. A common denominator, uh, not just uh, between countries, but a common, a common denominator uh, with the different stakeholders within a country. Who wouldn't want no hunger? Who wouldn't want no poverty? Who wouldn't want gender equality, renewable energy, clean water, partnerships, peace? So it's, it's a way, uh, and I think it was, uh, you know, uh, moving from the ND, uh, MDBs to the, uh, um, uh, to the SDGs was quite uh, significant, even the way they're presented. So I think this was uh, a very important, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, beginning because uh, many countries then said, okay, uh, between now and 2030, uh, which is 2015 to 2030, we want to achieve the SDGs, and then visions 2030 from different countries have become, uh, I would say, uh, either integrated in government programs or actually a way to mobilize uh, private sector engagement and also a way to mobilize uh, development partners for ODA finance, uh, uh, et cetera. In our case, uh, in the Egyptian case, uh, we uh, have very strong relationships with bilaterals such as France and, and Germany and many other European friends and, and, and Asian friends and, and, uh, and the US. And we also have very strong relationships with the multilateral development banks and financial institutions. And uh, we try to show uh, uh, through a very uh, detailed mapping exercise uh, the mapping between ODA each and every dollar to the SDGs. And we, we did that because we wanted to create a narrative around uh, the importance of ODA fulfilling national goals, which are consistent with the global goals. If all countries are moving towards achieving the SDGs, then the world is supposed to be better. There should be less hunger and less poverty and more gender equality and so forth. So this is a very important point that um, when we're talking about the cascading crisis, today we have a food crisis. Well, we have hunger as an SDG. When we're talking about the climate crisis, well, we have SDG number 13 as part of the uh, uh, goals that all of us have agreed on. So I think that, uh, um, uh, on the contrary, we should be, and all the initiatives that were mentioned, are trying to push forward uh, the SDGs. Then comes the financing gap. And when the decade started, 2020, the pandemic hit, and therefore, the decade of action became, uh, uh, you know, clouded by uh, a crisis that needed more finance. So we already had a financing gap. This financing gap widened. Uh, and after, of course, uh, the, uh, uh, Rebecca, as you mentioned, uh, the tightening of interest rates, we expect the financing gap to even be bigger. So um, here's where catalyzing private sector engagement uh, comes in. And um, Egypt hosted COP27 uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh last uh, November. Uh, and many of uh, our colleagues here were there. We had very strong collaboration with uh, Anictad. And one of the key items uh, uh, that uh, was part of our presidency is the idea of the just transition and the just financing. And uh, that's why we put together uh, collectively with MDBs, with private sector, with philanthropy, and we don't want to forget about philanthropy. You mentioned the, the rich families, Your Excellency, in, in different countries uh, and, and, and the institutions. Philanthropy today uh, can be, and what we call them, a very prominent P because uh, of the patient uh, capital, because of uh, their ability to come in with a grand component that can push the private sector to do more. And together with our friends and uh, uh, colleagues and, and partners, we, we, we wrote together uh, the Sharm el-Sheikh Guidebook for Just Financing. Uh, it's online, and I want to thank uh, Anikta James particularly, because also you played a very important role in uh, trying to identify in trade agreements, if we're taking climate action and so forth, uh, how should we adjust all of this? So I invite everyone to take a look at this. It's online. What we do here is we say what each stakeholder should do to make sure that uh, we move into this uh, just transition. There is just financing, capital providers, what's the risk, what do we need to entice uh, collaboration? And something very, very important, and this is a message Egypt has been emphasizing out of COP, is that climate action and SDGs are not mutually exclusive. Climate action and development are not mutually exclusive. Uh, when we uh, wrote our 2050 uh, country climate strategy, this was launched last June, um, uh, we mapped each and every climate action to the SDGs. And this was very, very important because, again, 
uh, it is not looking at an SDG gap and a climate gap if we are looking at climate as part of the SDG agenda. So um, there's, there's a lot of ways to create a narrative that creates the collaboration, uh, that actually uh, pushes multilateralism more. And uh, one of the um, examples that we also provided during COP is uh, a country platform uh, that looks at our priorities. The priorities were mentioned, and, and today, uh, if any country wants to access finance or invite the private sector uh, to uh, invest, uh, your projects have to have a green element uh, or have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, be climate friendly. And therefore, uh, countries in putting their development uh, priorities also account or should be accounting for climate action as well. That's a way to create uh, uh, successful uh, models of collaboration. So we put together Egypt's country platform for the nexus of water, food, and energy, trying to emphasize that mitigation and adaptation are important, not just renewable energy, which is extremely uh, important, but we also have uh, agriculture, we have farmers, we have uh, crop resilient, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, crops which are resilient to climate change, water desalination given our water issue. So trying to create a business and investable example of projects where private sector can come in, so you're doing both climate action but also uh, closing the SDG gap within the country. So I think that um, uh, if we do think about climate and development collectively, and if we do think or translate each and every crisis we're meeting today into how it affects SDGs or how we are supposed to uh, uh, accelerate action to move forward, I think we might be able to uh, push the agenda uh, uh, in the right direction. Uh, we live in a world where crises are going to happen more and more. <laughs> So, um, uh, uh, you know, nobody was expecting at the, at, the end of, uh, 20, uh, at the end of 21 that 2022 is going to look like this, but it did. Uh, and despite it being a very tough year, uh, the, the participation at COP27 was, was quite significant, the highest private sector participation, uh, a lot of political leaders. So all of this gave, gave faith that when there is a common goal uh, and we, we have a, a, a discussion where stakeholders are coming together, I think that there's a chance uh, to move forward. Uh, it's tough, but we cannot be pessimistic. We have to uh, keep on working, and I think it's uh, through forums like this, uh, through projects where everyone can come together and really work on practical solutions. And in our case, when we talked about Egypt's country platform, it's a practical way to move from pledges to implementation. Uh, France is partnering with us, MDBs are partnering with us, philanthropy as well. Uh, so, uh, and it's country-led, we have the ownership, and that's very, very important because you need to convince the citizens and the private sector in the company, in the country, uh, to move forward, and that's how you entice foreign uh, capital as well. So I can go on and on, but a lot was, was, um, uh, was covered already, uh, and again, I invite everyone uh, to check out uh, country, uh, Egypt's country platform for the nexus of water, food, and energy. It's Nuwafi, and Nuwafi in Arabic means fulfilling pledges, and that was... Uh, uh, the reason why uh, we, we named it that, because this COP, COP27 uh, was about uh, moving from pledges to implementation, and, and uh, the Sharm el-Sheikh Guidebook for Just Financing was a collaborative effort with many stakeholders, MDBs, Anaktad, the UN, uh, private sector, philanthropy, so it really has uh, the how. How can we move uh, forward with the implementation of all the pledges and the commitments? But let me conclude by saying that governments uh, need to have uh, I, what I call three important C's, commitment, clarity with what they want to do, and also gaining credibility with the partners um, uh, through, uh, through uh, you know, furthering and harnessing collaboration and also finding out the comparative advantage that each of our partners have, uh, and therefore we are able to bring them together over, uh, over what we want uh, as a vision. So as you mentioned, Your Excellency, moving from donor recipient into really uh, development partners, because we do partner on goals which we believe in nationally, but also they're all the global goals uh, that all of us believe in.